Okay, the last time we worked on blend shapes, I actually showed you a couple of methods of adding blend shapes uh, prior to binding, and also adding blend shapes after binding. Uh, you can actually, it is actually pretty easy to add blend shapes after binding, however, when it comes to adding them, you have your options and a little less flexibility. So it's important to try to do it as soon as possible. <coughs> or at least have uh, at least one blend chip node in place uh, before you bind, just so that you can easily add blend shapes afterwards without worrying too much about how it might affect any control systems or any of the binding and weight painting that you've done. And again, you want to make sure that your model is completed before you add blend shapes and ideally before you start binding and building. Uh, you can build the rest of the rig as long as it corresponds to you know, basically what geometry you have more or less. Geometry can always kind of change as long as you're not in the middle of you haven't already bound the character or have incoming connections uh, directly related to the rig into the geometry. Anyway, so as for blend shapes, there is actually a quick and easy way to add blend shapes after the binding process has been done without it, without having the binding interfere with the behavior of the blend shapes. Basically, uh, the quickest and easiest way is using, when you're actually creating uh, blend shapes, you go to, in the animation menus, you go to Create Deformers, Blend Shape, Option Box, and under Advanced, you'll see an option uh, under the Deformation Order that's called front of chain front of chain usually when I add blend shapes I want to definitely do parallel this way I can actually do a combination of uh, blend shapes to create other blend shapes uh, which is one reason why I use blend shapes so you can, it's easy to uh, smoothly blend from one form to another now however there is a trick with uh, front of chain you can actually select multiple blend targets, add them all at once, so that they are applied as one blend node. So these right now are the blend shapes that exist on Rigby. That's what I call this guy. So I've got, of course, small head, and then I've got big body. It makes him a little more buff. Okay. Then I also have my blend master. Now the blend master is something I showed in a in a previous ex uh, tutorial, where it basically just showed a way to add blend shapes after binding. That was a little more straightforward and allowed you a little more flexibility in adding them because you could use any one of the deformation order settings and you could also add blend shapes at any point, even after weights have been painted, even during the animation process, without severely impacting, or hopefully, uh, I don't think, impacting anything at all, except for maybe the weight of the character. Uh, because the more blend shapes you have, the more parts of the rig you have, the heavier the scene file becomes. So we've got buff rigby, and then we've got cartoony rigby. Buff, cartoony. Alright, so, when I disable this master blend, of course, it completely disables all the blend shapes because the two, one, the two that have been added were added directly into my master blend. Master blend is merely a copy of the original mesh that was added to the Rigby mesh prior to binding as a blend shape. So basically, I just leave that one on all the time, but as long as that one is on, any blend shape that I actually add or apply to my master blend they're not actually added, these aren't actually added to Rigby these are added directly to the master blend in the world space are automatically translated over to my original mesh 
see if I turn off the master blend, it disables the blend chips. Turn it on, turn it back on. So essentially it's just a, uh, a link in the chain. It allows me to add blend shapes at any point without having to even touch the original mesh at all. Even when I'm actually linking controls, I'd be linking controls directly into my master blend. Uh, because the additional blend targets have been added to it, so I'd be controlling them. And then along the chain also, therefore controlling them on the character character that's actually animated. But there is a more direct way to do it after the bindings are done, instead of going through the master one. I could. Let me just delete these, just so you can see. Make it a little easier to see. So I just deleted all my blend shapes. I'll leave my master blend in there. So I've got my blend targets available. Let me just activate that way. So my blend targets are now, are now available, as you can see. So we've got my master blend. We've got small head Rigby. And then over here I've got buff Rigby, big body Rigby. So I want to add these back in so that they can affect the character without negatively impacting the character when it animates. Basically, if I just added them directly, if you recall, I'll just select the original mess, mesh, and I'll add them using the default settings, like parallel, or actually default. Actually, I like parallel. I use parallel. Parallel actually allows you to use both the blend shapes and create a new one. Yeah, most of the time, if you use default, you can only activate one blend shape at a time. We want to be able to basically combine them, blend or blend shapes. So I'm going to just apply that. So it, on, it creates blend shape node too. So this will work. You'll see that they actually slide and deform the mesh. However, if you recall, if I animate my character, not sure what really this is. Notice how well, I haven't really painted weights on this very well, so kind of difficult to zoom. See if I make his head, the body, I'll make the head smaller. Notice how the head doesn't really scale like the blend shape tells it to? That's because the blend shape was added after the binding. Now, of course, there is a way to fix this after the binding's been done. As I mentioned before, you can go to the inputs, uh, go to all inputs. You can change the input order. Basically, make sure that the uh, skin cluster information is in a certain place relative to the blend. I never remember the order, but let's give it a shot here. See, look there, it says deformers reorder. And see, so it's trying to change the order. But as you can see, it's not really working. This is one thing that I worry about when it comes to doing this. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let me move like the tweak. Nothing else is really shifting around much. And that can be a problem. Alright, so I'm going to undo everything I just did. So we've got our skin cluster at the top, we've got our bone shape below the skin cluster. That's the proper order that we're supposed to have. Okay, I probably should actually paint that weight. But anyway. So now we have our bone shapes in place. Let me just quickly adjust these weights. I'm in my 2011, so I can actually select my paint weights just by right-clicking on the mesh. If I go to my uh, options over here, I'm going to the settings. This is in for a second, just do this real quick. 
Close the windows. Let's see what's going on here. Need a much smaller brush, give myself a little more control. And put a little more paint. Right. Oh, value. There we go. Now I'm just fixing this just so it'll be a little easier to see what's going on while I'm demonstrating. Alright, let's do it. Yeah, that's fine. Much. Okay. So, now, the way to get around the problem of adding the blend shapes and then having to unbind or go back and redo your weights, uh, what you can do is you can select your blend, just select your original, if you're going to add it directly there, and then when you go to Create Deformers, Blend Shape, Option Box, you can go to Advance and tell it Front of Chain. Now what this will do is actually it will align our input history so that we actually see it will put the blend shape information in the correct place so that it doesn't interfere with the binding, essentially the weight painting. So, we're going to add it, and we'll take a look at our list here on the right, our inputs. Let me zoom in. Let me take a look at our inputs here. Okay, zoom is not responding right now. So, I'll create. I lost my window. Wait. I'm going that up again. Oh, no, wait, wait, it did work. Okay. So, I create it, and let me just reload my input. Now, as you see, skin closed information is still up top, and our blend shape information is all the way at the bottom of the list. Okay? Which means these are contained within this. It's looking at these before it looks at this. Or looks at these and then it looks at this. So these these are the skin cluster information it contains the blend shapes. So the blend shapes should still perform within the scope that's been defined by our changes. And it should also just be committed contort within the skin cluster information as well. It's sort of like taking a sphere, putting a group around it, scaling the group, and then selecting the sphere, and you'll notice the scale on the sphere wouldn't have changed, even if it is all distorted and squashed, because the group has been. It's just not looking at that. As far as it's concerned, the world is what the world is, regardless of what it looks like to us. So, if I actually activate my Say my small head. And I need to turn up my master. See, this is the problem with uh, front of chain. The front of chain in place, since there is a blend shape sort of in there already, it creates a secondary group that can be overridden by my master because it was there first. I think I can change the input order. Get that to work differently. Yeah, it looks like I did. I was able to. Yeah, okay, there we go. So let me see if that works now. Yeah, it looks like it does. Okay, see, so now we've added blend shapes. Okay, let's take a quick look. So now we've added blend shapes, and they work properly because 
the blend shape node has been added so that it appears below the skin cluster information in our input history. Input history is basically all the information that tells my what to look at first when it's actually loading and animating your character. So if it's paying more attention to, let's say, the skin clusters and to the blend shapes once you start animating, then it's going to ignore the blend shapes altogether. In this case, it's paying attention to both, but in, in a specific order that allows them to work together. And that's what we want. We want everything, everything you add to your characters to work together so that when you animate, things are clean, pretty, and pleasant. Just got a little bit of a turkey neck there. <laughs> anyway, so that is just another method of adding blend shapes. I'm getting things to work a little better.